uh, three and a half days, we go probably, what would you say guys about, you know, 16 to 20 hours a day. I mean, it is intensive and there's nothing else like it in the world. But I mean, you know, we couldn't have really predicted the COVID-19 things and, you know, what happened. So we had to um, reschedule and we've rescheduled for October 15th through the 18th. But we thought, wow, let's add real value now. Let's make sure that people have real value now. And that's what we're interested in. It's just simply making sure that everybody has uh, an opportunity to get something that they really need. And that's why we decided to do this. Now, partly we'll be preparing our participants for the upcoming Undisputed Mastery event, uh, but also we'll be diving into a lot of real material. And if you saw the emails, then you know that there is a, you know that there is an all-star lineup here. We have people who train Navy SEALs. I mean, not just Navy being a Navy SEAL, but they train Navy SEALs constantly. We've got a senior vice president of Morgan Stanley here going to talk about how to invest your money. We've got experts on the cloud. I mean, we've been pushed into this place where if you and your business aren't in the cloud, you're going to be left in the dust, especially with how everything is going even more virtual than it ever was before. We know lots of things are happening here. We've got cloud security, internet security from a guy who is an expert, a red team, uh, manages, helps manage, you know, super companies and governmental contracts. We've got uh, guys who are going to be talking uh, about their own performances. We've got actors, UFC coaches and fighters. We've got people who are experts in breaking through emotionally. You've probably seen maybe Tony Robbins do this in live events. We've got guys who I've never seen can handle themselves this great before. We're going to teach you this about your business and about your life. So thank you again for, for joining us here. We want to make sure that you are getting some real value. And in order to do this, please be an active participant. You know, no matter what you do, it's what you put into it. That'll determine what you can get out of it. And so not only are you going to show up today, but I hope that each and every one of you will be able to really give it your all, which means listening, number one, with the intent of learning and growing. Even if there's something that's new to you, maybe it's exciting or maybe something like, wait a minute, I don't know. Give that a chance and you can grow from, from today. You know, research also shows that kinesthetic learning, that's taking your pen and taking notes. I'm still old school. I take notes all of the time. If you'll take notes and jot down stuff, if I'm your coach, we can begin to work through some of the material that you have here. If you don't have a coach, why don't you? Research shows that coaching is a great way to break through in every area of your life to make sure you're on top of what, whatever it is that you need to do. The best, the most successful in the world all have coaches. So take those notes, write those down, get with your coach so that you can take it to the next level. Also, if you will, we're, we'll have a lot of people on this call, over a hundred throughout the, the day and uh, processes. So please make sure that you're muted. You know, sounds happen. Life happens. A lot of us are at home. Some of us have teams and businesses that we're working out of, or we have groups of people on the call. Just please make sure that you're muted. Uh, Robert and I will do our best to keep an eye on that. But, you know, we're going to be gauged in the call, taking notes. I'm going to be learning. Learning. I mean, you know, I'm still in the process of growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. So I'm going to be engaged. And so if you miss it or somebody you know is making noise, please raise your hand so that we can capture that. If you get kicked off of the call, text me or text Robert so that we know what's happening because I'm going to be so intently listening and taking notes that I may not see your little deal flop, uh, flash up here. So make sure that you've got that. Um, also, after each speaker, we're going to have a brief question and answers period. I mean, all that is typed over on the side of the notes as you can see it. If you would like to answer, uh, ask a question to have it answered, just type it in. We'll do our best to get your question uh, I'll be fielding those and giving those to our speakers. If we don't get to your question, it's not because we thought you had a bad question. If we don't get to it, please email, email me. You'll see my email address there on the side notes, Dr. Keith at KeithMWagner.com. And I'll make sure to take your question and pass it on to get you the best results, the best answer, okay? So please, please take note of that. And I'll be reminding us of this throughout our event today. Um, just going on. We'll also have boxing breakout sessions. You're going to see Coach Maximus, aka the, the wrecking machine, aka, you know, Nathan Kirby, a fantastic man. He's going to be leading us after every second speaker in a brief boxing uh, uh, match where he's going to be fighting to the death, 
people, I knew that'd get your attention, not really. He's gonna be demonstrating a little bit about what we do at Undisputed Mastery. We take boxing as a metaphor and help people break through because motion and emotion are directly connected, right? I can sit still and be all stoic and it's much harder to have a breakthrough. But when I get up and I get moving, it's so much easier to mold myself and break through anything that could be holding me back. And we use boxing as a way to do that. So he's gonna be punching and just helping us you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to worry about even video. If you want to turn your video feed off, that's fine with us. But I do ask you to participate so that you can get up and move. And this is going to help break the monotony of the state of sitting. And he's got some really great stuff. He's a UFC fighter. He trains some of the best fighters in the world. He owns schools all around Arkansas and many different places. Guys, I mean, it's, it's a privilege to learn from this guy. So please participate in that. I also want to let you know that all of these uh, sessions are going to be recorded and we'll have that available on our members page. And so we'll be emailing you uh, how you can access that later on. We want to give you guys, we want to give you this for free. Um, since we couldn't have the Undisputed Mastery event, we thought, man, people have real needs. They have them now. And so we wanted to do this event to put that information in your hands. I believe 100% that all leaders are contributors. They're givers. Right. And this isn't about hanging on to all this awesome content. It's about making sure that you have access to it. And so we're doing that. Now we're going to get in the state, right? We're going to breathe just a little bit. And I'm going to talk to you just for a moment about leadership and relationships. But you guys make sure that you feel free to enter in your questions there. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Matt. Way to see you guys. Thank you so much for jumping in. Um, make sure you guys uh, enter in your questions if you have any. So we're gonna start right now, just get in your hearts. If you will, put your hand over your heart and we're gonna breathe and exhale. <sighs> breathe and exhale. So hand over the heart and you say to yourself, I'm willing to receive, wherever you are, say that out loud. I'm willing to receive right now. I command all the forces within me, my attention, my focus, my willingness, my drive, all of your hunger, all of your pain, all of your love, all of your attention in this moment to focus and as you breathe deep and receive. We'll breathe that through. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Thank you guys so much. Again, if you have any questions or difficulties with this, please message us. Let us know. If you're new to Zoom or a Zoom call, um, just make sure that you know you are looking up. There's all kinds of buttons, especially remember the presenter view where the guy that's talking is in the middle so you don't have to see everyone else's little icon or video. So breathe it in. One of the things I want you guys to know is about great leaders. You know, great leaders really, a great leader, all that they do is have great relationships. And we've created a tribe here with Undisputed Mastery. And this tribe is just basically where every leader that comes to the table, because if you're part of Undisputed Mastery, you're already a leader. And you realize that relationships are the key to influencing. I mean, isn't that what a, what a great leader is? He's just a fantastic influencer. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to know here is how to influence people, guys. And so we all have stories about leadership. And you know what? We're leading, we're living those stories right now. If you've ever read a great book or seen a great movie, you know, the greatest hero in those movies or in those books are always the ones that overcome. They overcome something hard. And the harder the trial, the harder, you know, the adversity, you know, the greater the hero, the more powerful we are. You know, and that's what makes a great story. And the fact is, you're living your story right now, whoever you are. You know, I, I can see some of your wonderful phases. I know some of you, some of you I haven't had the privilege to meet yet. But I mean, I can guarantee you, if you and I could spend a little time together, and I would love that, if you and I could spend a little time together, you know, I mean, I'm sure I could hear stories of triumph and heartbreak about things that you've overcome already in your life. And so in order to be a great leader, and especially a leader who leads through crisis, one of the things that we have to do is realize that we are creating our story right now. You know, I've gone through lots of hard stuff. Uh, I've almost died several times. I got a viral pneumonia that attacked my heart. It was crazy. You know, I mean, just really, really went through a hard time. I've gone through bitter divorce, bankruptcy. I've gone from having millions to having nothing on my knees, you know, being handed a divorce decree and a restraining order that prevented me from even seeing my kids. It was crazy. 
a story like that, I could have allowed that to just really beat me. But you know what? I had a bigger purpose. I had a reason to go on. And that reason was something I created in my own heart. And a part of what I want to lend to you today that I want to offer you is a real immunity to any crisis that you go through whether it's this COVID-19 stuff and the entire world pandemic or something personally you're going through in your life right now, whether it is some kind of belief system or something that is going on with you that you just can't seem to find a way through it. The number one thing that you have to realize is that what you do now, your actions right now are influencing people all around you. And if you want to rebuild your life, or maybe you already have in a great place in your life and you want to take that to the next level, well, you've got to keep going. Because we all have a decision to make. And a great leader, like a real warrior or a great champion, always prays for challenge. It's easy to be on easy street when things are going easy. But whenever we're challenged, whenever we're put under stress, that's how you can tell what's really inside of you. And I can tell you, there are people that I know for a fact on this call today that are going through many stresses, many hardships, whether it's in their business or, or in their personal lives. I mean, think about how suicide rates have spiked over this world pandemic shutdown. You know, domestic violence, so many things are happening. And guys, you know, one of the main focuses of Undisputed Mastering, what we do is to teach men how to lead, how to step up in their own realms. Now, women, if you're a woman on this call, welcome. We love you. Thank you so much for beautifying this, your, us with your presence. I love that. But guys, one of the things that's happened is that men failed. We fail to realize our power because a man has a choice. It's either to utilize his masculine power, his strength for good, you know, use his strength to make great decisions and to build other people up, or that strength is going to go bad. And if that strength goes bad, it'll either become passive, it'll fork again, it'll either become passive or it'll become abusive. And that's what we're seeing all over the world. Men mainly allowing their strength to go bad because for somehow, some way, they believe they don't have the resources to push through and to do the right thing. Well, when push comes to shove, you know, we've got to make that decision. And it really is a decision. You know, and I'm sure if you're here, you're already a seeker. You're already a seeker of truth. You're already looking for things. Because great leaders not only seek to do good for themselves and grow, because, you know, what you become directly influences other people. It's what you intend to do for others. And remember, the greatest gift you can give to somebody is your own personal development. For you to show up, doing the right thing, being a man of integrity, that's what it's about. Have any of you guys ever heard of uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, the boxer? You know, we kind of center what we do here around boxing, but he's one of the greatest of all times. You know, especially in the 70s and 80s, if you followed boxing back then, you could have heard lots of great stories about Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, he had a real opponent, a guy named Roberto Duran. And he fought him twice in 1980. The first time, you know, Roberto or Sugar Ray Leonard was a champion. He was in a place where he wanted to hang on to his championship. He, through his own admittance, was getting a little complacent. And he began to, what I call, fight not to lose. You see, a leader has a decision to make. In all of his relationships every day, in whatever you're doing, you can fight not to lose, which is just to hang on to what you got and not want to take risks, or you can fight to win. And when I coach professional fighters specifically or sports people or, you know, I, I coach professional ball players, people from the Dodgers, the Cardinals, the Reds, all, all around. One of the things that we have to do is I teach them, hey, you have got to play to win. You can't play just not to lose. Sugar Ray admitted that he began to fight not to lose. And so he was stiff, he was rigid, and he got the beating of his life and he lost the championship. Well, he was set to have a rematch later that year in November. And uh, you can watch the story called No Moss, which is Spanish for no more, right? It's a fantastic story that Sugar Ray Leonard talks about. And in that story, he says, I was afraid for my life. He got such a beating. I don't remember all the details, but I believe his orbital bone was broken. And just his spirit above everything else was broken. And because of that, he had to face himself, just like every great leader must do. He had to face himself and make a decision. And he said that his knees were shaking, even up until that day as he was climbing into the ring to fight. But he realized that he had to fight to win. And as the story goes, you can look it up there in the fight. Uh, he gave it his all. 
He knew that he had to go beyond fear. He knew he had to go beyond any doubt that he had. And by the way, that's what great leaders do. It doesn't mean that we're without fear. It doesn't mean that we're not in some type of crisis, but we keep going and we make decisions and we own that every single day. That's really what this is about, guys. And so he got in there and he fought, he fought so well, getting his old speed, his old technique back, that it said that Roberto Duran gave up, I think, in the eighth round. And he said, supposedly, no moss. Waved his gloves like, I can't go anymore. You guys, that's a heralding story that we've got to see ourselves in. Every single day, we have a choice. We have a choice about what we'll do. You can give up and you can be defeated. Bruce Lee said, no man is defeated until he accepts defeat. No man or woman. You know, and you can choose that and to be overcome with fear or you can choose the pathway of faith. Really within us, the ability to choose our focus either on fear or faith is an ultimate weapon for our own good. Guys, it's, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you what you choose. Now, let me ask you a question. If you guys have a piece of paper, if you will, please get that out because I'm going to ask you a few questions and I would really love for you to write down the answers and then email those to me. Again, if you're my client, I would love to help coach you through this. But here's question number one. Number one, what are the failures of leadership? Now, use, draw from your own experience. What are the failures of leadership? I mean, think, who's failed you? I mean, if you have a few names, write them down specifically. We'll keep it confidential. So that's the first question. What are the failures of leadership specifically? Who has failed you and how? I'll give you just a moment to write those down. Now, if you will, think about what have you learned? Did that cause you to quit, to say no mas? Oh, I was treated unfairly? Because I guarantee you, your leader was a person. They were a human being. And so I know that they failed you somehow, some way. Guys, you see, we have a choice to allow that to define us and cause us to quit, to give up, or to choose something else. Because we also must ask the question, and please write this question down. How have you used these failings of even your own leaders? How have you used them? Have you used them to strengthen you, to motivate you, to make you determined to keep going? Did you learn from them? Did you use them? Or maybe did you use them to weaken you, to make an excuse, to make a limiting belief somehow? I mean, it's really, it's up to you because we've all greatly been affected by leaders in our own life. I mean, there is power in leadership. And the fact is every single one of us on this call today, we're all influencers. We all get to choose the ramifications of how we influence and persuade other people. I like to call it a chain reaction. Give you, for instance, if I'm with my wife and we're here and she comes to me and maybe, you know, she's having one of those woman moments, you know, feminine, beautiful, but she needs something from me emotionally. And let's pretend I'm too busy. I got lots going on. I have a choice as a leader, as her man, as her husband in that moment to create a whole series of events, a ripple effect through time. Great leaders not only make great decisions, but they are also able to be present in the moment yet also understand focus happens in three time periods. Number one, there's focus of preparation. This is, some people say focus of the past. I like to say just preparation and focus, which is like any encounter, any relationship, any business venture, no matter what it is in your life, it's all relatable. I must be able to understand what I want more than anything. And in my marriage, I can tell you this, I want to have a great marriage. I want to be happy. I want to be loving. You know, my image is if I was watching it like a movie, the image that I have of my marriage is real lovers. I mean, the kind of love affair that people want to talk about. Because the fact is, in any relationship, you'll either demonstrate a warning of what not to be like, or you'll be an example where people go, yeah, that is a fantastic story. That's what we want, guys. And because that is my goal, right? I have prepared that with my focus so that any moment, even if she comes up to me and she has a need and maybe, you know, she's being human, maybe she's making mistakes, maybe she's had a bad day. I have the ability to control that. I really do. I really do. And so guys, for you, you've got an ability to control that as well. We do. 
So there is the preparation of it. Number two, number two is the present moment where in the moment I take a deep breath, I have to control my physiology and I decide what I'm going to focus on right now, either faith or fear. Either, oh man, doesn't she know how busy I am? Or, wow, my wife has a need. I remember because I've already prepared what's important to me. And then there is focus in the future where I see those cascading effects because how I respond to her right now purposely or will control and dictate a whole series of events like a chain reaction. One of the things that leaders must do is own that chain reaction, right? That's what we must do constantly, always. And if you don't, if you make an excuse for that, kind of like playing chess, if I don't see several moves ahead and be purposeful and on purpose with that, my relationships just simply will not be good. This is true in business. This is true in your core romantic relationships, your friendships, what we like to call your tribe. It's true in your life. It is. Now, I'm almost out of time here, guys. I had lots more prepared, but you know how time goes in 20 or 30 minutes isn't a lot. And so uh, if you have any questions about this, guys, you can feel free to type those in now, or um, there is uh, a way that you can contact me and we can dive more into it in the, in the future. So either way you want to do that, you can either email me at drkeith at keithmwagoner.com. I'll type that again here for you so that you can have that. Or you can even type in a question right now if there are any. All right. Good. Some great comments here. One from uh, Ethan that says, there's more honor in defeat than in unused potential. Okay. Good. Another one. Hell yes. Right. Good stuff, guys. All wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. All right. If there are any other questions, guys, make sure that you know that you can contact me anytime. All this material is going to be there for you to develop. But let me leave you with this thought. In order to be a great leader, right, it takes presence of mind. It has to happen on purpose. Remember, first you build rapport with people. You get to know them. You want to understand what the outcomes are. And you ask them great questions. Being present, prepared, right, in the present moment, controlling your focus, and then understanding the chain of reaction. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Really good stuff. All right, guys. Hey, we've got a real treat. Our next speaker, a great friend of mine, we have been friends, man, I don't know. Uh, Harley Elmore and I have been friends for a long, long time, since probably you know, the early 90s. I first met him uh, as I was looking for a martial arts instructor a long, long time ago. And uh, he's been my martial arts instructor for about 30 years. It's, it's incredible. And so um, Harley Elmore, he's a military science expert and one of our speakers here today, uh, he's what we call a Tuhan in the Filipino martial arts, which basically means grandmaster. He's a trainer of Navy SEALs. Uh, I'll read a little bit of a bio here. Uh, Harley Elmore has been training and teaching martial arts for 40 years. Throughout his career, he studied and analyzed training methods from a wide variety of martial arts and cultures. Harley travels the world, really teaching individuals, special interest groups, police, military, I mean, the best of the best guys, you know, some of which we can't even say their names because this is being recorded. But I mean, just think Navy SEALs and beyond. It's incredible. He's worked full time with the capacity of the Department of Defense embedded in a unique special force training pipeline. Uh, he's been a uh, director of the training for PSYOP Tactical Group, where, like I said, he's trained America's and other countries, world elite. Uh, forces. Uh, he's recently gotten a special permission to be our tacti tactical director for one of our organizations, the nonprofit organization that seeks to stop human trafficking around the world. We call it Operation Rescue Children. And so we recently have had many great operations where we've done that. Where we train people all over the world so that they can actually stop the bad guys and save lives. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And if any of you'd like to know more about that, please contact me. We we're always looking for prayers and support and, and good thoughts. Um, Harley is also the tactical director for a new program that we've developed. Or we call it Principled Savage, which is where we take the actual stuff that they use to train Navy SEALs and we present it to a very select few people. In fact, I mean, you know, there's only a few that we're going to allow into this program, people that are thoroughly vested. But the goal is to give people real skills, real uh, attributes so that not only can they defend their family, but also think like a Navy, Navy SEAL and be prepared through any kind of crisis. 
we're um, premiering that program this upcoming month. If you want to know anything more about it, please uh, contact us. Again, we only let a select few in. You have to be thoroughly vested, but it's the real deal. Think real deal Navy SEAL. Hey, that rhymes, Harley. I don't know if we could use that. But let me see if Harley is here uh, on. Harley, I will unmute you, brother. Are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Can everybody see Harley? Give me a thumbs up if you guys can see him. Woohoo, right. brother. Thank you for coming. Uh, Harley's yeah. topic is mentality, reality, how to prepare for a crisis. In a world where enemies can be invisible, like a virus, a leader must prepare himself for everything to change in a moment's notice. Everything you've ever known and trusted can immediately be jeopardized if you're not well trained. You must recognize the reality and discipline your mind, your mental ca capacities, your emotional states to survive and thrive. Harley, thank you, brother. I'll turn it over to you.